Hey guys, Boz here. I wanted to do, do another how-to video. People uh, seem to enjoy these and I get questions a lot. So I'm gonna try to do how-to videos every now and then, answering a bunch of common questions. But one question that I get asked a lot, either in comments, private messages, during a live stream, what do you use for, to make videos? Um, for recording, which is not, what I'm not gonna talk a lot about, I use OBS Studio. There's a lot of great programs out there. Um, Fraps I used to use in the old days, DX Story I used to use, um, Bandicam is out there. There's some free programs. The, those three that I mentioned are paid programs. Uh, OBS is free. I also use OBS to live stream. I really like it. It's a great 100% free program, great community behind it. Um, and it lets me do multi-track audio. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the future if people would like it, you can let me know. But when I first started making videos, I used Windows uh, Movie Maker, which was part of Windows Essentials. But as of January 10th, Microsoft has stopped distributing Windows Essentials. So I don't know if it's possible to maybe download Windows Essentials still from like download sites, but I'm a little leery of trying to recommend that because I don't know how safe it is. Uh, but they've stopped having support for this Windows Essentials, which included the Movie Maker. I use Adobe Premiere Elements. Uh, I really like it. It works perfect for me. I think it's a, it, I'm used to the tool. It renders quickly, and I like it. I also have uh, Vegas Movie Studio. I got it on Steam. Um, it's pretty darn good, too. I don't think it renders quite as fast, and it's not as intuitive to me. But some of that might be just because I'm so used to Adobe Premiere Elements. I've used this program called Lightworks before. This one has a free option and a paid option. The free option um, doesn't do anything above 720p. So if you want to do a 1080p video, you're out of luck unless you buy it. It's got a monthly fee to it too. There's no outright price, I don't think anymore. There might be. Um, we can click buy now just to see. Um, monthly license, a year license, or an outright license. So you can buy it um, outright. I'm not a big fan of monthly fees, and I think this price is insane. $25 a month, that's that's just crazy. Um, it used to be like seven or eight dollars or seven ninety nine or nine ninety nine, which I still think is is bad. But you know, this program was originally uh, going to be released as open source. Uh, it's never happened, and I don't think it ever will. It's a very nice program. It's got a lot of really cool features. The way you work with video, and, and you can like create like groups of things. So, like if you have an intro, you could have like your intro is like a a group, and then you could take your actual like video and tack it onto the end of the intro and have an outro, um, where you don't have to like kind of like recreate them or copy and paste them. Uh, it's got some neat features, but it's it's harder to use, and I don't like the fact that to do 1080p you have to pay a monthly fee. Uh, I've recommended this program for people who want to try something free. It's pretty uh, full featured. It's 100% free. Uh, it's a little bit buggy, to be honest. Um, some people have sent me videos that they've rendered with this program, and sometimes they don't look right. And I don't know if it's the program or if it's the person with the settings. But it is free. Um, Blender is a great uh, 3D creation tool. It does like modeling, animations, a lot of like Pixar level stuff uh, was made. Uh, with Blender. It does do video editing. It's kind of a little different. It's very diff It's probably the hardest one to use out of all of the things I'm talking about, but it's 100% free and it'll do it if that's something you're interested in trying to learn. We're not going to get into that because I don't even like using it. Uh, but what I'm going to show you, and I don't know the pronunciation of this, it's called KDE NLive or KDE NLive. Uh, KDE is a desktop environment for Linux. This used to be only available on Linux. It is now available for Linux. It's also available for Mac and, and it's available for Windows. So we're going to go to the download and you can see you got all the different Linux versions depending on what like Linux you're running. Um, Mac OS uh, is working on it. I don't know how up-to-date it is to be honest, but you know, there's a link there you could try it. Um, but we're going to have to download it. We click this KDE servers and it uh, takes us here. We're going to say download. It's 113 megabytes, but it also needs this FF uh, MPEG uh, shared 64-bit little uh, build library. We're going to click that. You can see it's downloading. We've downloaded both of them. Now, the installation of this is a little different. It doesn't have an installer um, for Windows. Uh, when I, I've tried this program before in the past on Linux, and it was a little bit buggy, but it works really well now, and it worked well on Windows when I tested. 
So to install this program, what we're going to do is we're going to click the download um, and we're going to just drag this to our desktop. This folder is the, the software. So we're going to drag that to our desktop. That's step one. The next step you'll see here, this little description shows you a couple other things on their website that you have to do in order to do the install of this. Now you don't maybe want to install this to your desktop. You can put this file anywhere you want. Um, you can put it on your C drive. You can put it on like a D, an D drive. You can put it in a different folder uh, somewhere if you have like a folder called programs. I wouldn't put it in like program files x86 or program files um, because I think that's kind of not a good idea to do manually. So it's up to you to decide where you want to put it. We're going to leave it on our desktop right now, uh, but what you, I'll show you a way to create a shortcut to it if you would put it somewhere else. Uh, but you can see here, we also have to install the FFmpeg, which we did download. Uh, but what it says is unzip the file, copy the contents of the FFmpeg bin subfolder into the KDE uh, NLive Windows folder. So we're going to just grab this and drag it to the desktop for now and we're going to close that. So the first thing it wants us to do is copy the contents of the bin subfolder, which is right here. So we're going to copy that. We're going to put it over here in this folder, which we've done. And then it wants us to copy the preset subfolder to the KDE. But this time we're copying the folder, not the contents. So we're going to take the presets and we're gonna drag it into the KDE and live and we're done. So we can get rid of this. Now it does tell you start the program from KDE and or KDN live in the folder, close it and reopen it. Because I think the first time you run it, it's gonna generate a couple little errors because it's probably generating config files that don't exist. So it may do that, it may not, because I've done this install once already to test this before. So I don't know if it stored the files in this or some other directory. So we'll see what happens. So we're gonna go in here and you're gonna look for uh, KDN Live. Now I'm gonna hit right click and say copy and then I'm gonna go over here and just say paste the shortcut. That's what you would do if you wanted to have a shortcut to this on your desktop. It'd be nice if they actually had an icon for that, but we'll live with it like this. So we're gonna run it by double clicking it and you can see it loaded. Now the first time you do this, you're probably gonna get an error message instead of this stuff. Um, and that's okay. Close it, rerun it, and you'll be fine. But it's storing configuration settings somewhere else. That's why it's not doing it for me because we've already installed it. Now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this because we don't need it. Okay, so we're gonna make this um, full screen. Now one of the things I wanna show you is, right now it says 1080p 60 FPS. When I first ran this, it defaulted to 1080p and I think it was 29.99 FPS. I went under, um, project settings and I changed it to 60 FPS because I only do 60 FPS stuff when I create uh, content unless it's from a live stream or something maybe when I didn't do 60 FPS so we're gonna go with that and uh, here I have a folder where I've got um, some content this was a UHC video we're gonna just drag that up into here and you can see we've got ourselves a nice little video. And we're going to drag it down here into the video. Oop, missed. And uh, we're going to kind of scrub here through it and just let's, let's scroll this so we can see a little bit more of the video. But let's let's see if we can find something interesting. We don't want to do a lot. Uh, it'd be nice to to find a little bit more. Let's scroll it all the way out. Maybe get a little bit of movement. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna, by default, you're on the selection tool. I'm gonna click the razor tool and it basically puts a cut in there. Um, and then we're just going to scroll. Um, let's zoom in now and let's just do a little, a little bit here and let's do a cut. As we don't want a lot of thing, we're gonna go back to our selection tool we're gonna hit that. You can hit the delete key. I'm gonna hit right click and say delete. For this one, I'll hit the delete key. And you can see now I have um, a, just a short clip. So let's let's zoom out. Let's put that over here at the start. 
So now we have a short little video clip. Let's just scroll here and we can hit play. Uh, and you can see players uh, fighting. Uh, it may not look very smooth, maybe a little jerky. This is just a preview window, but that's good enough. So um, let's go over here and we want to put, let's just put a title at the end of this. Um, and we can go under, I think if we like clip here, click add clip, we can say title clip. Uh, this pops up. I don't know why it popped up in my other window. Um, and let's just type text in here and let's just say hello. And let's change the color to a nice, a nice blue. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, so there we centered it. And let's just click OK. And here we have our title clip that says hello. And let's just tack that on the end. It's nothing fancy. Um, and you can see there's effects, you know, there's blur and hide, you know, there's different things. There's enhancements, denoisers, sharpen, there's fades, fade from black, fade in, fade out. So let's just try. I've never used this before. It looks like we might have a fade out there. Not really sure about that. I'm gonna hit Control Z to get rid of it. Um, I don't know if if it truly would fade out or not. But again, I I just wanted to show you a tool that really works with high quality uh, video. So. Um, Let's just say we're done. We've got our, our beautiful video here. This thing's not very long. Let's hit render um, and let's let's select MP4 and let's switch it to our desktop. And let's just call this test. So we have a test MP4. We're gonna save the full project crank the quality because we like quality um, and let's render to file I hit close by accident there uh, you can see it started this shouldn't take too long this doesn't render as quick as like Adobe Premiere Elements or Windows Live Movie Maker uh, but you can do so much more I mean you can see we got multiple audio tracks we can use we have multiple video tracks you can add more uh, you've got titles, you've got transitions, uh, a lot of great uh, tools available to you. Uh, and this is going to be done here in a second. Now, one of the things you're going to notice on this video clip here, uh, this has audio with it. You can right click it. I don't know what would happen if I do it now while it's rendering. And you can separate the video and audio so you can see them both. But this is the video and audio on this thing. If you wanted to have a commentary track, like your microphone and you have that separately, you put it here. Uh, if you have music, you can put it here. You could add more tracks. All right, so we are done. Let's just minimize this. You can see here we have a video on our on our uh, desktop. Let's click it. Then I'll go full screen here with it too. And it looks gorgeous. Uh, I don't know how well it's gonna turn out uh, on the uh, video because we're capturing a render. But you can just see, I mean, it's 60 FPS. Uh, the text is nice and crisp and beautiful. You can uh, just see all the beautiful uh, sharpness to it. I mean, it just looks great. Now you gotta remember, I'm in 3D or spectate mode. So this like little clipping here you see, and when you look here at the very beginning over here, that's because I'm in spectate mode and I can see through certain things. So that's not like a video glitch with the render. That is just because of me being in spectate mode. But it looks gorgeous. So, I mean, you can see we, we rendered a video very quick. Um, and like I said, you can like right click this and you can say uh, split audio and now you have your audio uh, separately. You can kind of see the, the peaks of it when the uh, monster attacks, you know, and, and, uh, and everything occurs. You could drag another audio track uh, down here. Because uh, when, when I do um, videos, you can see here, this is the video that we're looking at here. But I also have a 
intercom, which is what I call communications, and a microphone. Uh, this communications file, this is an audio track for this that contains Discord. So it's everything happening in Discord. Let's just play it and just jump around. See if we can find any of my commentators. They're a very quiet bunch. So I don't hear a word from them. There it is. Yeah, so you can see uh, not a lot of talking from them. Now this is my audio, so this is my microphone. Forced out, I feel bad, but that's that, uh, AFK'd and got... So you can see, I have my audio separate from their audio and then the game audio. Actually, all of those things are in this video. Um, I don't know if it'll show it here on details. Like if it'll tell how many audio tracks there are. Um, I don't think it tells you here. Uh, but there's this video actually contains all of the audio uh, but it's just most video editors don't show the extra audio tracks so you have to extract them i wrote a little program that automates that for me which generates these files and actually names them properly um, but you i mean if you look at the video the source video here when i go into audio track you can see i've got desktop which is just the game Com software, which is just Discord, microphone, and then everything is these three mixed together. It's so here, two more. You can hear the the blocks breaking. Huh. You can hear me so talking. Seven you hearts. can hear the uh, commentators seems helping me. Seems odd. Talking. So uh, all of the stuff is contained in that file. Uh, Premiere Elements doesn't see the extra tracks, so I have to extract them. This program obviously doesn't. And uh, when I did talk about the uh, the earlier the um, oops, wrong button when I talked earlier about some of the other programs I used um, the Vegas Movie Studio does actually see the other audio tracks so you don't have to actually extract them with it. Uh, but like I said, this is a great little program. Uh, it's a Linux original. It may have some issues. I mean, it's open source. It's continually being developed. This is a port of, wind, of it to Windows. But if you need some better features and you want something free, uh, obviously it's going to have some learning curves. I'm sure there's some great videos on, on YouTube on how to use it and how to do different things with it. Uh, but this is a nice program. And I'll be honest, this thing renders really well. I was really impressed. It uses the FFmpeg libraries to do all that. And I'll be honest, uh, it's really good. Um, if I wasn't so in, like hooked into the Adobe Premiere Elements, I think I'd use this program. But I encourage a lot of you, if you're struggling with Windows Live Movie Maker, if you're struggling with hit uh, the hit box thing or hit, hit films, if you are struggling with other free apps or you don't have anything, uh, maybe you tried Lightworks and it was too complicated, maybe you tried Blender and couldn't figure it out, this program is really, really nice. It's got a lot more features than what I'm talking about here. I just wanted to show you the basics um, just to be able to make cuts and to do titles. And that'll do a lot of what people want. But now you can also have multiple uh, video tracks and you can lay this stuff on top. So um, it should say hello on top there, which it does. Um, you can have another video track, like if you wanted to put like a little video uh, and shrink it or something, you can do anything you want to do. The world is your oyster. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Come check out the live streams, hang out, play with us. We do the UHCs, we do uh, other multiplayer games where people can join in and play like H1Z1. And I do some single player stuff and different things too. And just chat with people while I play games. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you with another how-to. Let me know what kind of things you might like to see. Take care.